So, does Colorado have room for wolves? Say hi, Luna. The biologists, ecologists, and other academics throughout North America say yes, there's plenty of room and habitat for wolves. Ranchers and hunters say Colorado has too many people and not enough elk. They even put this into a multi-million dollar propaganda campaign just before the ballot initiative to reintroduce wolves came out in Colorado. As we know, the ballot initiative still passed and wolves will be coming to Colorado. Still, they complain that Colorado is not Idaho, Montana, or Wyoming. Right, while these states have fewer people, they aren't the only states with gray wolves. So let's take a look at the state of Minnesota. It has a wolf population of an estimated 2,700 wolves. That's more than Idaho, Montana, and Wyoming combined. Now, let's compare size and population of Colorado. Minnesota has a human population of 5.64 million people and 86,943 square miles. Colorado has a human population of 5.759 million people and the space is 104,185 miles squared. So that's really not an argument. I could list similar stats from Europe, but I think everyone gets the point. People are actually a much bigger problem for wolves than wolves are for people when you look at it realistically. So, what about livestock loss? Well, again, let's look at Minnesota. In 2019, authorities verified 74 calf kills, 11 cow kills, two sheep kills, two dog kills, and 10 other animal kills in Minnesota, and 13 animals, mostly calves, wounded by wolves. That's not a big percentage of livestock loss, especially compared to disease, weather, and other predators like coyotes and stray dogs. The USDA shows wolves account for less than 1% of livestock losses in Idaho, Wyoming, and Montana on average. What about effects on game in Minnesota with all those wolves? Well, overall, the Minnesota DNR says forecasts for archery and firearms deer hunting is very good, and wildlife officials in the central region of Minnesota are urging deer hunters to take advantage of bonus licenses to hunt antlerless deer from October 21st to October 24th to help manage deer populations. In Idaho, Montana, and Wyoming, you get the same outlooks and reports every year. They're all good. In 2020, Idaho had a near record elk harvest. Well, what about human safety? Well, there have only been about 27 attacks on people in over 100 years in all of North America from healthy wild wolves and only two deaths. Nearly all those attacks were food habituated wolves as well. So the chances of you getting attacked by a wolf are extremely slim. In the last four months, I've spent a lot of time in the mountain regions of Colorado, mostly on the front range too where it's more populated. We recently made a trip to Estes Park to check out a probable place where wolves might be released. On the drive up, I did notice cattle ranches and horse farms, so compensation should help with the few livestock predations that will occur, but I definitely have to agree with all the scientists who say there's plenty of room for wolves. Colorado is also just loaded with elk and deer. And Colorado has the largest elk population in the lower 48.
This is the Beaver Meadows area of Rocky Mountain National Park. This could possibly be a great area for watching wolves, which in turn could bring in millions of tourist dollars and they could take down these ugly fences that were put up to keep ungulates from over browsing on this vegetation. So there you have it. All the stats say there's plenty of room, there's plenty of food, there's plenty of everything and good reasons for wolves to be back in Colorado. So what do you think? Leave a comment down below. If you like this video and want to learn more about wolves, wolf dogs, and dogs, please hit the like button and subscribe.